Hello and welcome back to yet another video of the Innovation Explained series. In today's video, we'll take a dive into quite an extensive topic, the phase gate process. On one hand, it seems to be super straightforward, at least in theory, and it is considered as one of the best ways to create new products and services. Then on the other hand, it is complicated, it gets called rigid, and even a killer of creativity in innovation process. So which one is it? I will let you judge that for yourself, but first, to get there, I will try to explain all the key points of the process. What is the phase gate process? What is it made of? And who's using it? Let's start with the basics. What is the phase gate process? The phase gate process, also referred to as a stage gate, is a project management technique in which an initiative or project is divided into distinct stages or phases separated by decision points known as gates. In short, it is segmented do, review, innovation management and new product development technique. It is used to efficiently manage resources, prioritize initiatives and lead the project from the early ideation steps through development and prototyping to launch. Since day one, the goal of the technique has been to divide a lengthy product development process into several well-defined steps to ease its evaluation along the way. While the phase gate is often hailed for its benefit, it is not a process for every single organization. The phase gate process can be a great fit for big organizations where a hefty upfront investment, be it time or money, is typically needed to deliver a product to the market or in industries where there are specific regulatory constraints. Complicated projects like developing and manufacturing a new drug or a smartphone device, while difficult and requiring a very diligent, well-coordinated approach, are fundamentally predictable, hence they can be successfully planned out in advance and benefit from the phase gate process. Common examples of industries where the process is used include the pharmaceutical sector, construction industry, electronics, manufacturing, and similar. So what exactly makes the phase gate process? It is comprised of six distinct steps of process management that are called phases, and six post-phase review steps called gates. While the phase gate process can be adapted to different company needs, and the process might have fewer or more phases and gates, the traditional and the most often discussed approach is always started by a discovery phase and ended with a post-launch review gate. This latter version of the process is one that we will be discussing today. First things first, let's get a better understanding of each phase. First, to kick off the innovation process, you need ideas worth developing. In a phase gate, this step is called the discovery phase. For new product development, the discovery phase focuses on defining the problem or discovering the opportunity. Here, it is crucial to know what your potential customers' needs and wants are. It is worth noting that one should not limit themselves to ideas from their team only. Suggestions can come from outside your organization too. They can be sourced from interdepartmental brainstorming sessions, market research, collecting feedback from customers, suppliers, product teams. So it is important to keep an open mind. During the discovery phase, you generated a good idea. And during the next one, which is called scoping, you map out some of the key risks and hypotheses associated with the idea and turn it into a tangible concept that you could start to develop. During this step, the initial feasibility is considered and market research is conducted. During the scoping phase, it is crucial to understand the current supply and demand in the market to determine what can be offered. However, not every good sounding idea is worth developing and during the scoping phase, it should be evaluated based on the organization's strategic and tactical priorities, not only the market fit. The third phase or feasibility phase, often referred to as business case or business viability, is the glue that pulls and holds your project together. It is an important step of the phase gate process during which an actionable plan for the development of the product or service is created. The feasibility phase is complicated and time-consuming and it is recommended to divide it into four steps. First, there is the product definition and analysis needed to determine whether the product is desirable and whether it solves the earlier discovered problem. User research during this step can help answer such 
crucial questions as how to satisfy customers' needs and according to those, what features should the product have. Both quantitative and qualitative research should be conducted, for example, interviews, surveys, focus groups or similar. Additional market and competitive analysis also takes place during this phase. The business case follows next. In short, a business case is a document that compares the project's benefits against the costs, with a focus on whether the benefits truly outweigh the expenditure. It allows decision makers to understand if the plan at hand is realistic. The third step is the feasibility study. While your business case analyzes whether a project should be done, the feasibility study evaluates whether it could be done. And at its core, it answers the simple yet key question. In case of launch, will the outcomes of the project justify the cost needed to develop it? The final step of feasibility is to build the project plan. Your project plan will determine what, where, when, and by whom. Think of it as a schedule for your business plan that overlooks all the steps that you will take to move through the phase gate process. It covers resources needed to complete the project, estimating how much time it would take to develop, how long it would take to test, and finally, when to launch the product. Take your time and consider all the what ifs during the feasibility case, because after this, if your project gets the green light, it will move to the development phase. And the time of the development phase is meant to work on a tangible prototype of the new product or service. Design and development teams should work according to the preset goals and clear KPIs. In addition to product or service development and design, marketing campaign and plan for how to reach the target audience will be drafted at this point. Finally, early stage so-called alpha or lab testing might take place during the development phase too. The ideal goal of this stage is to prepare an early working prototype, ready and set to go into the testing. The fifth phase of the process is validation. Its goal is to validate the prototype and for that, testing takes place. It is important to determine whether the prototype delivers any value and did it really meet the needs and objectives defined in the earlier stages. This step is all about polishing the rough edges, testing marketing and distribution channels, and testing processes around the product. Early stage testing took place in the previous phase, but now it is time to see the product in action and gather as much feedback as possible. The validation step gives a chance to make the final tweaks and fixes to the project, and if it passes the post-validation review step, it successfully moves to the launch phase. The launch is a long-anticipated culmination of a lengthy and exhausting process. However, while it sounds all fun and games on paper, the launch phase is the step where all of the departments meet and have to work in perfect sync. Alongside the marketing department working the magic and the knowledgeable sales team, you must ensure the following are in order too. Volume of production, methods, and channels for customer acquisition and delivery. One thing that is important to plan for the launch is customer support. You might exhaust all the means of testing the product pre-launch yet you will never be able to 100% predict how it will really behave in the market. In case your product gets a lot of attention, be it good or bad, a knowledgeable and dedicated support team will eliminate possible bottlenecks. But to reach the launch phase, one must pass many reviews and withstand scrutiny, also known as the gate reviews. So what exactly is a gate review? in the phase gate process. Gate reviews are checkpoints for assessing the potential risks and progress of the project and making the decision on whether or not to allocate additional resources to it. They also provide a great opportunity to share feedback with all teams involved. This review typically includes a few different steps. The first is the quality of execution needed to evaluate the quality of execution of the previous phase. Second, business rationale to determine whether the project can be fruitful considering the assessments performed beforehand. And finally, action plan to evaluate whether the expectations are reasonable and whether there are enough resources to implement all the planned or desired steps. If the idea is feasible and just the resources are lacking, it is common to pause the project and reassess it later. 
Normally, people responsible for reviewing and gatekeeping the project depend on the organization size, type, and scope of the product or service. Usually, it is a cross-functional executive committee or a steering group. In a nutshell, this group or person is responsible for ensuring that the project gets a green light to move forward or gets stopped. In addition, they provide feedback and guidance to the project development teams to help them identify risks and to avoid unnecessary mistakes. For the gatekeeper, it's important to understand all the practicalities around the project. While there is a budget to keep an eye on, the progress will be doomed if it's just the numbers that get looked at. The gatekeeper needs to deeply understand the market, technology, and customers. Traditionally, a project managed with the phase gate process will go through four reviews. Idea screening, second screening, go to development, go to market test until reaching the final pre-launch gate launch. If during the final gate, the project gets approved and reaches the launch phase, the last thing that should be done is a post launch review, which could be considered as the final gate. Unless our organization decides otherwise, there are four possible outcomes for each assessment step. Go. The project is feasible enough to get the green light. The go phase should include an agreement on what the project should deliver in the next phase. Having this in place will make the next gate review much easier. Kill. The project is not feasible and gets shut down. If a project does not have a sufficient merit, the kill decision should just put an end to it. Hold or pause. The project is considered feasible but not at the current time or state and gets put on hold. Conditional go or rework. The project can proceed to the next phase only if it meets a certain requirement and condition after a rework. Quite often the phase gate process is seen in black and white. You either kill or launch a project. For some, the outcome is as clear as that. However, it is not the case for every project. Conditional go is just as important and crucial an outcome as go or kill. Some strategically important projects might be sent back for a rework several times, just to make them truly viable and garner their full potential. And while to some working on the project this back and forth might be seen as a challenge, it only means that the phase gate process works as intended. The phase gate process is an adaptable and scalable approach that can help transform your business by identifying new opportunities and unlocking more innovation. And while on paper it all sounds pretty easy and straightforward, in reality it requires a dedicated management team to make it work for your organization's unique business environment and culture. However, the goal of today's video was to provide a simple and clear definition of the phase gate process. As mentioned earlier, it is a huge topic. And if you want to hear more about it, for example, the benefits or challenges of using it in your organization or how to make it work a little better, let us know in the comments below and we will definitely get back to this in the future. With that said, if you already have your mind made up and you want to try the phase gate process, you will find some valuable resources in the description box below. For example, there you will find a link to FEMA's dedicated board template for the process, which makes starting, planning and evaluating so much easier. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this information useful. Consider subscribing to stay up to date to our future innovation content. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.